6.2b, we're going to find the mean and standard deviation of the sum or difference of independent random variables. So let's go back to the El Dorado Community College. This time they've actually switched and we're looking at their downtown campus. Now at their downtown campus, you only take three unit classes versus in the other one we could take one credit courses. Here we're going to define the variable y as the number of units taken in a fall semester by a randomly selected student downtown. Here's the probability distribution. Remember, a full-time student is between 12 and 18, so if they're only three unit classes, the only options are 12, 15, and 18. Here's the probability associated with it. Now, they are already telling us that they found the mean of this distribution was 15 units. Uh, the standard deviation was 2.3 units. Now, they want to know if you were to randomly select one full-time student from the main campus and one full-time student from the downtown campus. How many credits could you expect them to be taking? So those two students together. Well, let's recall, by the way, the information about the uh, main campus. Uh, recall from the main campus we had this probability distribution here. Uh, we did compute the mean was 14.65 credits. All right, so what could we expect in this case? Well, if we take one student and the other student, what we could expect to happen is the new mean we're going to call this s, the variable s is going to be um, the sum of the two. Uh, it's going to be the mean of the first student and the second student. You add them together. We could expect the mean credits to be 29.65 credits, which hopefully makes sense. So if you combine two variables together under two different probability distributions, you add their means. This seems like a real logical answer and an easy one to come up with, but I want to show you why. So let's take a look at the next slide. Remember they called event S was the one downtown campus and the one main level campus together. So let me show you. If I did the probability distribution for the main campus from 12 to 18 credits, here's the probability of every event. And then Y is uh, all of the combinations we could have. I could have had someone from the main campus at 12 credits and someone from the downtown with 12. Or I could have had the main was 12, downtown 15, or main was 12, downtown was 18. This right here is every single possible combination I could have had in terms of randomly picking students. So if it was, for example, 12 credits from the main campus and 12 credits from the downtown, what's going to happen is we're at 24 credits. And all I've done here it would be this student and that student so you would multiply. Remember to find the independent events together, you multiply 0.25 times 0.03, we get this. If I do that for every single scenario, I'm going to get this probability distribution. So if you come in here and you compute the new mean and standard deviation, the new mean would just be 24 times this, plus 27 times this, plus 30 times this. And if you do that, what you're gonna end up getting is the mean will be 29.65, which is just what we found. Now let's talk about the standard deviation. Let's use this new probability distribution, which is here and also here, and compute the standard deviation. Fine. By the way, I could do list 1, list 2, my calc, one variable stat, and look at sigma sub x. Uh, by hand, though, just to remember, uh, I would take uh, the piece of data of 24 minus the mean, square it times its new probability, uh, variance is 9.63. So let's just make two conclusions about the mean and the variance then. So what I've just noticed here is that the mean, all we did is we took the first mean and the second mean, we added them up, and we got it. For variance, remember sigma squared, uh, what we did is if we take the variance of the first student and the second student and we add those up, we get 9.63, which is what we have here. So to find mean and variance, you just add the two variables together. For standard deviation, we do have to be a little careful, though. And we'll address that in just a minute. So let's do the formal definition of the mean of a sum of random variables. If we have two events, x and y, and we're going to make t, which is x plus y, all you have to do to find the new mean is you add the two means together. Now, before we talk about variance, let's just review independent random events. Remember, independent means that the outcome of event X will not in, impact the outcome of event Y. Um, we do need to keep this in mind when we start talking about the variance. 
We also can conclude about variance when you sum the independent random variables. In this case, it was very clear to see the variance of the new combined variable is the two variances added together. Do know this can be done for more than two events. If I wanted to add three students together, I would just do a plus the third standard or the third variance in this case. Again, you must be cautious in this case. X and Y must be independent in order to do this. If the two events are not independent, you cannot combine their variances together. Now, here's the thing you have to be very cautious of. Let's talk standard deviation. Uh, this is a very common mistake about standard deviation. What do students improperly do? What they do is they tend to find the standard deviation of variable x, the standard deviation of variable y, and they add those two together. That is absolutely the incorrect order of operations. To find standard deviation, you must first find your variance and then come in, and all you have to do is take the square root of what you had. I say this, and please remember, never ever add your two standard deviations. Find variance first and then square root it to find the actual standard deviation calculation. Let's go back to El Dorado. We have a new event this time. We're going to call this event B. And it is the amount spent on books in the fall semester for a randomly selected student at the El Dorado College. Um, and suppose that the mean of event B is 153, standard deviation is 32. Then we're going to have event C and it is the cost of the tuition and fees, which we've already looked at. And on that, the mean is 832.5, standard deviation 103. Should ring a bell to us. What they want us to do now is find the mean and standard deviation of the cost of tuition, fees, and books. That is, we have to add the two variables together. So in this case, the mean is very easy to find. All we have to do is add these two mean values, it is a simple calculation, but you must show the AP board you're adding those two together, which gives you $985.50. Now be careful, on this one, uh, the standard deviation cannot be calculated since the cost for tuition and fees and the cost for books are not independent. The more tuition and fees I'm paying means I'm taking more credits, means I'm taking more classes, so I have to buy more books. There is a direct connection between your cost of tuition and fees and your cost for books. So in this case, students who take more units will typically have to buy more books, so we cannot compute standard deviation. Now, if they were independent, how would we do it? All we would do, we would come on in and we would take 32 squared, we would take 103 squared, get that answer, take the square root, and that would give us a new standard deviation. Let's switch gears and talk about what if you find the difference between two variables. Um, so again, we're going to have variable x and y. Let's call the event d, which is x minus y. In this case, the new mean or the new expected value is just going to be the difference of mean of x minus mean of y. Makes sense. Now, the new variance, again, you must have independent random variables. Um, to find the difference of variable x and y, you actually are going to add the variances together. This may seem counterintuitive to you, but here's why it happens. When you add va more variables together, it means you're going to have more variability, no matter how they're combined. If you think about it this way, what if uh, element x is me wanting to pick a restaurant I want to go to for dinner, and your element Y, it's you wanting to pick a restaurant to go to dinner. If I just go to dinner and pick my restaurant, I just go and that's easy. It's not a lot of variability in my decision, I pick and go. If you're by itself, easy enough. But if you combine the two of us together and we say, where should we go to dinner, we cause all this more variability where we have to discuss it. So the variability actually increases. Therefore, because of that, how do you compute standard deviation? Same as we did as if we were adding the variables. Please find the variances first, take the square root, and you've got Let's it. go back to the El Dorado example. Here they uh, say, suppose we randomly select one full-time student from each of the two campuses. Uh, remember, the downtown campus and the main campus. What are the mean and standard deviation of the difference of their tuitions? So T minus U. Uh, keep in mind, remember the cost for the 
Um, I think this was the downtown campus versus our main campus. Uh, so what we can do is find the difference. The mean's not tough. Again, it's going to be a mu of t minus mu of u. You subtract it, show the work. Um, so we're going to take the main campus minus the downtown. The mean difference is uh, negative 92.50. What does that mean? Well, it means, on average, full-time students at the main campus pay $92.50 less in tuition than full-time students at the downtown campus. Okay, next part, find the standard deviation of the tuitions. Okay, be careful, we first must do the variances, and it's the difference, we're still going to add them, so I'm going to take the variances of each of the two schools. Um, and to find those variances, though, I actually have to take their standard deviations first. So take this standard deviation and square it. Take this standard deviation and square it. That's what we're seeing here. Add them up. That's my variance. Now, take the square root of that. We're going to get the new standard deviation is $163. What does that mean? Well, it means that uh, the difference in tuition for a randomly selected full-time student from each college will vary on average by about $163. So if I randomly select one student from the downtown campus and one from the main campus, no matter who I pick, on average I'm going to be within a $163 difference that they pay in their complete tuition. Let's check your understanding on that and switch examples. Here we have a large auto dealership that keeps track of sales and lease agreements uh, made during each hour of the day. We're going to define X as the number of cars sold and Y is the number of cars leased uh, during the first hour of the business on a randomly selected Friday. So uh, based on the previous records, here's the probability distributions. Uh, the cars that are sold and the probability of it happening, mean and standard deviation, and then the lease probability, mean and standard deviation. They want us to find the difference between uh, selling your car, buying, doing a sold car versus a leased car. So let's find the mean and interpret that in context. Again, again not difficult for the mean. We're just going to take 1.1 minus the 0 0.7. So we could say, on average, this dealership sells uh, 0.4 cars more than it leases during the first hour of business on Friday. We probably should just double and put the work for this calculation, which is that minus that, so we get credit. Okay, compute the uh, standard deviation of the difference, assuming x and y are independent, so that's important to know. Um, to do that, uh, standard deviation is just going to be taking each of their current standard deviations, squaring them to get their variances, adding them up, and taking the square root, so standard deviation is 1.14. Here's a great review question. The dealership's manager receives a $500 bonus for each car sold and a $300 bonus for each car leased. Find the mean and standard deviation of the difference of the manager's bonuses for this. Okay, fine, we can do that. Uh, let's first apply this transformation of multiplying by the data. So remember for that, when you multiply, uh, we're gonna take the mean and the standard deviation of when I was selling the car, which is right here, and we multiply that by 500. And we have to take the mean and standard deviation of the leasing and multiply that by the 300. So that will give us uh, the new values for that. Um, and then what we can do is compute the difference. So we're kind of combining uh, multiplying by a constant, now finding the difference in variables. So the mean difference is this mean minus this mean. So if we subtract those, we get $340. The standard deviations difference, be careful, we're going to take this standard deviation and square it, which is right here. We're going to take this standard deviation and square it. We add those two together for the variance, take the square root, and we get the standard deviation, $509.09. This is really an excellent problem because it brings together both adding variables and both multiplying to single variables. Now let's conclude with this. 
Combining normal random variables, which is what we've been doing. We've talked about center and spread with the mean and standard deviation. What about the shape? Um, any sum or difference of independent normal random variables is also normally distributed. This is just a given assumption. Let me show you why. Here is variable x and variable y. This is their probability distributions, which they both are approximately normal. Now, if I were to look at the sum of combining these two variables together, uh, the sum we're going to get, um, and I'm going to show you this picture right here. This is the sum. When we combine them together, this distribution looks approximately normal. Uh, the center, we would just take the center of these two distributions and add them together. Again, to find the standard deviation, we're going to take uh, standard deviation squared plus standard deviation squared, take the square root to get our new standard deviation. But the key here is that the shape is going to be unchanged if you add them. What if you subtract them? Well, if we subtract the two variables and find the difference, here's what this distribution looks like. It looks normal. It's again approximately normal. Uh, we can absolutely find the mean and we can absolutely find the de standard deviation. So what you want to take away from this is if you're combining variables that are currently approximately normal, their shape is guaranteed to also be approximately normal. But you must, as you are stating and finding their center and spread in terms of the shape, you have to say they look approx or it, they are approximately normal. You must actually just state that somewhere on your paper.